Hello, and welcome to the Optimum Design Associates Library Tracker video series. In this first video, we will introduce you to the online library tracker tool and give you a brief overview of its capabilities. On your PC, launch your internet browser. We recommend using Google Chrome due to its clutter-free interface that allows you to maximize your screen real estate. Click in the address bar and type in https colon front slash front slash optimumlibrary.com and press enter. It may be a good idea to save this site as a bookmark for future reference. This is the login screen where you enter your email and password. Clicking submit will log you into the online tool. If this is your first time logging into the tool, click the new user link. On this page, enter your email address and click Submit, and you will receive an email with instructions on how to set up your password. If you happen to forget your password, simply click the Forgot Password link. On this page, you enter your email and click Submit, and you will receive an email with instructions on resetting your password. Upon successfully logging into the system, you'll be taken to the customer landing page. On this page, you'll find links for navigating the tool, a list of your recent customer requests, and some resources to help you in case you run into trouble using the tool, such as user's guides, quick start guides, and this video series. Let's go ahead and click requests. This is the request page. Think of this page as the epicenter of customer activity. Up at the top right, you'll see your name and your role. You'll also see links to navigate within the tool. This page is broken up into several areas. The top area is the request area. This is where you can see your company requests, your individual requests, as well as perform actions upon requests and entering new requests. The bottom half of the screen is the item area. This is where you add individual part numbers to a request. You will also be able to see the status of those parts and perform actions on them within a request. There's also a history area which will show you the history of a request or an item, whatever is selected at the current time. Let's take a closer look at the request area. You'll notice that all of your company's requests are visible, both active and completed. You can view your request by hitting the View Mine and switching back to your company request by hitting View All. You'll also notice that the requests are color-coded. By clicking on a request, you can view the request status in the upper right. This one is not submitted, which means it's a request that's a work in progress. You may still be adding items and it has not been submitted to ODA. The orange request means the request has been submitted to ODA for approval. We will review the manufacturer part number and promote it to be built. The red means it's promoted and awaiting creation. Down here you can see the items that were added to this request to be made. The yellow means the request is in process. It shows here that the parts have been created, they are awaiting final check. The blue shows that the request has been completed. You probably have the parts back in your possession, but the cells are not Valor verified yet, and they are being sent out for Valor verification. The green means the request has been completed, and all components of the part, symbol, footprint, PDB, and DX databook have been verified. Some of the other features available are the ability to add additional context. For example, if you're going on vacation or you want to keep another person in on the loop with this particular request, you can add their contact information to the request. Another tool available is the View Report button. By selecting a completed request and clicking the View Report button, you can see a report about that particular request. Request details, project, library, order, manufacturer, manufacturer part number, the symbol name used and the footprint used, and the status of the request. If we pan over to the right, you'll also notice that for any re selected request, you'll be able to view the revision history of that given request. You can also select an item and view the revision history of the item as well. 
We also have the ability to suspend a request. Simply select the request and hit the suspend request button. It'll notify you that the request has been suspended and you'll notice that the color changes to brown and the request status is suspended. You can reactivate the request by clicking the activate request button. It'll notify you that it is being sent back to the library group for review and the status also changes to resubmit it. Now let's take a closer look at the item area of the request page. Think of an item as a part. Any request can have as little as one part or as many parts as required for any given request. The table shows order number, manufacturer, manufacturer part number, internal part number, miscellaneous ID, description, a data field where files may be attached to any given item, an upload button where you can upload your own attachments, a expedited checkbox, a notes area, and checkboxes for symbol, footprint, PDB, database, revision, and due date. You'll also notice color coding in the item field for the symbol, footprint, part, and database pieces that make up a library component. This gives you real-time visibility to the status of your part within the system. The item status determine the request status. In this case, created a waiting check. In this example, you'll notice that the footprint is a different color than the other parts of the component. By clicking on the item, you'll see the detailed item status, symbol is completed, part is completed, database is completed, but footprint is sent for valor check. Therefore, the request status is going to be the lowest common denominator of those combined statuses and show sent for valor check. In this request, the symbol, footprint, part, and database are created, but they have not been checked and verified, so the request status is created awaiting check. In this request, all of them are green. Therefore, symbol, footprint, part, and database are all completed, so the request is completed as well. You'll also notice some action buttons along the bottom of the screen, similar to the request action buttons. You can suspend an item, move an item up in order, move an item down in order, clear the fields of the entry area, and clone an item. We'll go over that in more detail in the request creation video. On the order page, you'll have visibility to your company's purchase orders for Optimum Design Associates library work. You'll be able to see the PO number, the date purchased, the amount of the PO, the rate, and how many hours were purchased. As we are creating parts, checking parts, and doing valor verification, we're entering our time into this tool, and it is deducting it from your total hours purchased, so you have real-time visibility of how much time is left in your PO. We also have the ability to send automated emails when a PO reaches a certain percent to let you know that that PO is about to expire. Back on the request page, in the upper right in the links area, there are some other links we will discuss. Clicking the help link will launch an interactive, fully navigable, and clickable PDF. All you have to do is click on a hyperlink and it will take you to that portion of the document. Clicking top takes you back to the table of contents. Also in this guide are email addresses and telephone numbers to the technical support staff that support the library tracker tool in case you run into issues that aren't covered in this guide. The last link to cover is the logout link. When you're done entering your requests and your items, simply click the logout link. It will exit you from the system and take you back to the login screen. Thank you for watching and please be sure to check out our other videos that give you step-by-step -step instructions on performing common tasks within the tool.